If you're looking to disinfect your instrument, um, there are a couple products out there on the market which I highly recommend and a few things you need to be a little bit careful of. So the first thing that a lot of people like to use is Clorox wipes. They're like this. And um, with Clorox wipes, they can only be used on part of the instrument. They can be used on the string. Um, going all the way down, I would stop when you get just to the bridge. Um, you don't need to touch the strings down here since we never touch them anyways. Um, but if you feel better, you can wipe down the strings down there as well. Um, same thing with the strings up here. So you can clean down the strings with the Clorox wipes. And you can um, clean also the fingerboard with the Clorox wipes. So if you take a wipe and you just very carefully put it between the fingerboard and the strings, you can kind of glide it up the fingerboard in order to kind of get all on where the fingers touch, where the most of the majority of the, the germs are going to be. It's right up here where our fingers are touching down. You can also use this on the chin rest, assuming the kind of chin rest that you have is plastic. Um, the danger with Clorox wipes is Clorox contains alcohol. That's one of the strong um, chemicals in there that kills a lot of the bacteria. Alcohol cannot go on any kind of wooden surfaces with the exception of ebony, which is what the fingerboard is made out of. So if your chin rest is plastic, which many of the beginner instruments are, you can use the Clorox wipes on that and you'll know if it's black. The majority of student instruments um, are black on this uh, chin rest and that is definitely plastic, especially if it's shiny. If it looks something like mine, there's a good chance it's made out of wood, in which case I would not recommend Clorox. This one actually on this instrument is rosewood, which is the same as my peg. So I cannot use Clorox wipes on that since those are made of wood. You can also check your pegs. If your pegs are black and shiny to match your chin rest, which they often do try and match the two together, same with your tail piece, which is this part here. You can use Clorox wipes on there as well if it's black, if it's plastic. If it's black, it's going to be either plastic or it's going to be ebony like the fingerboard. That's okay for Clorox. If you're a little bit more nervous about it or you want to clean other parts of your instrument that are wooden, such as the body of the instrument, the best product out there is called Simple Green. It's an all-purpose cleaner. You can get it at most stores. Um, I usually get a giant jug of it at um, Home Depot, for example, but you can get it at most places where you can get cleaning products. Uh, and just put a small drop of that it is green, um, a small drop of that green liquid onto a paper towel or a cloth. You don't want to have it too saturated because water or liquid and wood does not like each other. But you can do a small amount. You can clean all of the strings. You can clean the fingerboard. You can clean your peg. You can even go on the varnish. This is unique because there, are, there is no alcohol in simple green. So it is able to be used on the varnish. It will not damage it. If you put alcohol-based cleaners on the wood varnish, it will be significantly damaged. Um, and that's going to be a major problem. You'll have to take that to the repair store and it's going to be a pain. Um, so simple green all-purpose cleaner is really the go-to cleaner that I prefer. It does a great job disinfecting, does a great job of cleaning. It's also the same cleaner that they use whenever they have an old instrument such as a Stradivarius instrument and they want to clean it uh, and get rid of any of the dirt and junk on there without doing any damage. So this is a really great product um, as an alternative to a Clorox and you can use it on quite literally all, all the exterior parts of the instrument as well as the back. So the main big parts that I would personally disinfect the high um, impact zones where most kids are going to be touching is around the neck, which is this part, as well as the fingerboard in this area. Now, if your student is more advanced and they're shifting, they're going to be using more of the fingerboard, so I would cover the whole fingerboard. Definitely the strings, 
And then also most students have a go-to place where they grab their instrument and hold it, whether that when they grab it out of their case or when they are holding it in class and we have it in rest position. So a lot of violins and violas will hold it here. A lot of cellos and bass will also have their left hand somewhere touching the instrument, possibly their right hand if they're cellos or basses and they kind of are holding it maybe on this area or something like that. So your students may know their go-to places. Uh, you can also sometimes see it in the varnish. You won't be able to really see it here, but most of the varnish has a bit of a, of a glisten or a sheen to it. And where you touch it a lot with your fingers, it gets a little bit softer, kind of a matte finish. So for my instrument, this entire corner here does not have as much uh, shine effect as the rest of the instrument, as well as right here on the back. And I do a lot of shifting with my music. And so I'm going to be moving up all the way up my fingerboard and kind of getting stuck in some places and reaching around. So there's different parts for all the instruments. And if, if you don't know what part your instrument gets touched the most, I'd play it safe and I would just clean the whole thing. Um, or you can try and play a little bit and see where you naturally tend to touch the instrument the most and start to disinfect from there. If in this process, um, something happens, maybe you are choosing to go with your Clorox wipe and it did touch on the wood and you see that there is damage done, um, let it dry so that it doesn't um, continue to do damage. So take a paper towel, dry it off completely the best that you can. It is usually for alcohol-based cleaners, if they touch the wood, it's going to strip off the varnish. And if there's enough alcohol going on there, it could penetrate into the wood and cause significant damage. Um, so let it kind of dry out. And then I would take it to the music store that you rent from. Uh, or if you don't rent, go to one of the major instrument companies that we highly recommend in the area. And they can take a look at that. If it's a varnish issue, that's a pretty simple fix, but it is going to take some time uh, and that means less time on your instrument to practice. So be very careful if you do use an alcohol based cleaner again for the Clorox wipes. Um, please only use these on the strings as well as the fingerboard. Um, don't let the alcohol based wipes like Clorox touch any part of the wood. And if you're really concerned, I would invest the, the couple dollars for a bottle, small bottle of simple green, uh, and you can use that over everything. Um, and then you don't have to worry about possibly damaging your instrument when you're trying to keep it clean. The next thing that a lot of people forget is one of the most touched parts of your instrument, which is the bow. So the biggest part that we touch is down here near the frog. Um, you can use Clorox wipes uh, on the frog itself. Most of them are, are made out of ebony, but again, if it's, if it's wood or um, a very fragile material, I wouldn't use Clorox. I would use that simple green. Uh, and depending on the kind of stick that you have, same procedures. So if you have a wood bow, um, and then it'll be very easy to see because it looks like wood. The rest of them are either gonna be plastic, brown plastic or black plastic, or carbon fiber. Um, the carbon fiber bows, you can use any material on them. The plastic bows, you can use anything on them. Uh, it's only you need to watch out for the wooden bows. Those are more expensive as well, so you definitely don't want to damage those. Um, so Clorox a little bit on the stick and the frog. Do not touch the bow hair with Clorox or simple green. Leave the bow hair. Um, if you're very concerned about the bow hair, two things for you. The first is you shouldn't be touching bow hair in the first place. So if you're not touching the bow hair, you're most likely not going to be getting a lot of germs on there. Second, if you are worried and concerned about it and you want to just play it safe, go get new bow hair. Um, any of the music stores can replace your bow hair and then you don't have to worry about it. It'll be brand new. They, it's always cleaned really nicely to get any dirt and debris off of there before it gets put on your bow. Um, but you shouldn't really have hardly anything on the bow hair whatsoever. The majority of your germs are going to be going on the frog and on the stick. 
Um, not really much further than the winding or a grip, depending on your style of bow. Uh, so it's really just this bottom portion. And then don't forget the screw. The screw of the bow is most often forgotten because it's so tiny. And we think, well, we hold it here, but we have to turn this screw every time when we take the bow out and when we're finished with it. So don't forget the screw, that's metal. So you can use any product on that. And that should get you started. If you're really concerned uh, about your instrument and you're, you're a little nervous to do this on your own, please feel free to take it to the music stores uh, and see if they will help you out at all uh, or wait till you see your teacher. Um, but like I said, simple green, I totally trust and most places in the Houston area will use that at the music stores as well. Um, so you can save yourself a couple bucks and, and do it at home as long as you're doing it carefully and properly uh, and be very careful with Clorox. So I hope that helps with uh, teaching you how to disinfect or sanitize your instrument.